Konami finally releases a ban list. It had five changes. Did you see that? It had five changes. If I was in office, if I was the CEO of Konami, I would have had at least 55 changes. We would have fixed everything. We would have fixed the format. We would have banned Eradicator because that needs to go because only losers play that card. Only Sleepy Joe plays that card. But for now, we're gonna discuss the ban list and all five changes because Avril R32, he's so big. He's such a big deal. I would definitely bring him onto my campaign. And I'm hard. You should all be hard. The Ultra Ball is hard. And we're all gonna be hard together. Let's dive on into this video, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most Avril R32 here and destroy the ever living boo boo stain off of that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher. The 12, what is it? The 1280 ladder, something like that? Yeah, let's let's go with that. I hope you all having a fantastic day. Hope you enjoyed that little intro. We're trying to spice it up a bit like my love life because, you know, we, we can't get a girlfriend to several lives. But you know what? That's okay because we got the Ultra Ball and that's all we need in our life to feel hard and good. Also, did you play the Teal Mask DLC? Very short, but it was actually pretty good. I've already got Monkey Dory on my team because he looks like a little mini Harambe. And, you know, we love Harambe because we hairy like that. <laughs> so... Let's talk about uh, the poll five changes on our dog water ban list. Now, I did do a poll, and because of my channel size and with what I've noticed on my channel as of late, is that like polls that I do and videos that I upload tend to gain views over time. So it's kind of hard to like do a poll and like do a video the same day because it's got so few votes. Um, so as of right now, it's sitting at four votes. But what I did do was that I wanted to get some sort of idea of what people thought about the ban list on the day of. And even though it's currently only sitting at four votes, it's going to be interesting to see where it goes from this point of whether people love it hate it, or are undecided. And out of the four votes, it was 25% love it, 25% undecided, 50% hate it. Now, again, obviously that's only four votes at this moment in time, but it's gonna be interesting to see like a week out how many votes it has, if any more at all. And that's just because of my channel size and how the YouTube algorithm is. It is what it is, it's not a big deal. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how this develops over the next week, since the the balance doesn't go into effect for 10 days, to see where it is that the community falls into category-wise, how they feel about this balance. Because I feel like overall, even though it was such a small vote list, that people are very divided with this ban list because it was so small and people really were unhappy with where the game was. As diverse as the format will continue to be, even with Unchained being basically the new tier one deck that has stepped into the room, people still aren't going to be happy with the things that they're going to have to deal with in this format. So let's just go ahead and go over one by one here. First up is the one ban card is Cash Tira Rise Heart. Now I, see, I saw some people talking online about how this doesn't really hit Cash Tira at all, but you have to keep in mind that in the Cash Tira's end board, you know, yeah, they can make Shangri-Ira and lock out a zone with Rise Heart's effect banishing the top three of the opponent's deck right now. But now they can't just go like, okay, banish the top three, make a Rise Heart, sit on that for the fourth summon with like back row and hand traps. Because now they don't have access to that. And a Rise Heart was such a broken card because every time something got banished, which it was a macro on its own, it would just attach a card. And you could use Pot of Prosperity for basically no loss and advantage and attach things like the, uh, what do you call it? The Earth Machine Link Monster, prevent it from being destroyed by card effects. You could attach any sort of other things to it to get some kind of advantage. Uh, and on top of that, like I said, it was a macro. And it could also target a card on the field and banish it just by detaching three materials. It was such an amazing, diverse card. And on top of that, even if you weren't playing Cash Tira, if you were if you were playing some sort of Cash Tira engine, then you could just play one copy of a Rise Heart. And as long as the opponent activates a Shangri-Ira effect, then you could drop out like a Fenrir or whatever and then drop out your own Arise Heart. And... It did reward skillful players in that regard. I mean, I remember when I was playing Cash Tier when they were at full power, not this now last format, but the format prior, and uh, my opponent actually activated Shangri-Ira's effect, and I went, okay, cool, summon out my own Cash Tier and then make a Rise Heart. He goes, you didn't use Shangri-Ira's effect. I said, no, it says if a Shangri-Ira activates its effect. So it did reward skillful play and, I don't know, I guess reading of the fucking cards <laughs> at that point in time, but... 
being 3,000 attack and defense was just so killer. Like, you could flip it face down, but you still had to have something with over 3,000 to run it over. It wasn't just a matter of, oh, it's got zero defense. Let me book it, run it over, and then continue my lines. Like, no, you really had to deal with the card, and it just felt so damn oppressive as a deck. Not even really because of the zone locking, because that got dealt with when you banned Diabolsus. But then with still having a Rise Heart, it was just so insane. Now... What are some other things that we're going to have to go into the format dealing with this right out of the gate, still just talking about the one ban card? Obviously, King Calamity hasn't been banned. Obviously, Eradicator hasn't been banned. Now, I was talking with our buddy Valley D because I've been taking a break from the game the past few months, so he's been filling me in. But he said that things like Eradicator aren't as much of a blowout card as they used to be, just auto-winning you the game. I don't really agree with that statement because if you're playing Labyrinth and you get hit with an Eradicator and they call it traps, you basically just lost the ball game. Um, you're playing Runic, they call spells, you lose the ball game. Um, even if you're playing Sprite, if they call spells, you're probably going to lose. Like, there's a lot of decks that really get hurt by Eradicator calling spells or traps or whatever the case may be, right? And so it, it's a card that really should have at least been hit to one because of the factor of Trap Trick being able to play multiple copies, banish it out of the deck, set it to the field, or if you're Labyrinth, being able to set that Eradicator and just win if you hit that auto win button because we don't have Red Reboot. That's not to say the Red Reboot should be in the format. I don't think it should be. It's a very unfair card. But if Eradicator goes off, you're probably going to lose depending on what deck you're playing because there's no way to stop it. There's no way to out it. There's not a card you can play from your hand on the first turn that says negate Eradicator with your already set up board because we don't have Red Reboot. So that is something to keep in mind. King Calamity, of course, is also not banned. I know a lot of people are going to say, Avery, that's a YouTube combo. I understand that. But even when Super Heavy was at full power with three of the Scarecrow Link monster, we still saw some builds playing Cyberstein and playing the FTK version of the deck even though it seemed to be deemed by the majority of the community that the ftk build was not the best build people were still playing that build even if it was just a youtube combo what did konami do they banned cyberstein they banned scarecrow link and now super heavy i would argue is a tier two deck if you saw my tier list video earlier today then you know what i'm talking about and so this balance just could have done so much more um, to, to two, like nothing went to two. And then to three, we saw Herald of Orange Light and Salamangrate Gazelle, which is just whatever. And then to one, we saw Chaos Space and Magnemite. Now, does the hits that we saw to one and three really change a lot? And honestly, no, they don't. Because Salad inherently, I feel is like a rogue deck, maybe tier two, depending on the event. And Dragon Link can still function in a multitude of different ways. You know, if you look back on my channel, you'll see that I covered a Necroface 60 card pile deck a while back, which played like Cyframe Gear Gamma, it played like three Chaos Space, it played three, I think it played three Magnemite. It was like a 60 card pile of good stuff. It played the Ashizu Millers along with Keldeo and Medora. Like it was just like a giant pile of cards with a Thunder Dragon engine and the whole nine. And you're still gonna be able to get away with doing stuff like that. You're still gonna be able to play Dragon Link. It's not like Druus Worm and Magnemite are the only fucking vice deals in the game. You've got Saroiner, you've got Baldrake, like you have these other things available to you, even to a lesser degree by Steel Lubelion, just to be able to have a body that you can bring out onto the field from hand or grave. The by Steel stuff is still really good. Magnemite being hit to one is very good because now you can't just grab any dragon multiple times on both players' turns because of, you know, multiple copies. So seeing it be hit to one is a very, very fantastic thing. Um, and then again, talking about the things that went to three, Orange Light and... Uh, Gazelle is is just sort of whatever. Uh, you know, Orange Light, I think, was just a knee-jerk reaction to a Shizu tier. Uh, you know, having that back at three now is not a big deal. You know, Naturia has already been hit, and the Ashizu Millers have already been hit. We're not going to have to worry about seeing Naturia in the format just because we have three Orange Light. And Drytron's suddenly not going to be a tier one deck again just because of three Orange Light. They're back at full power minus Eva. And I think even if Eva like came back to one, I think at most Drytron would be a tier two deck, AKA they wouldn't really move up in the meta tier list at all. I still think that they're a tier two deck regardless with or without Eva. So the format that we see ourselves going into is a format where the more things change, the more they stay the same, like literally, because now if you were playing last format and like you were really grinding it out, playing cash or playing whatever deck, insert deck name here, the only thing that you really change is, okay, I need to learn what Unchained does if I didn't already know what the deck did, 
you know, going into YCS Vancouver this past weekend. Once you learn what that deck does, then it's like, okay, cool. I probably don't have to worry about Cash Tira because outside of D-Shifter, they have no way to macro my field unless they're going to start playing D-Shifter and Macro Cosmos, which those are just going to be dead cards anyway once they've established their board, so they're probably not playing that. And if you already sold your Fenrirs, then you're going to have to rebuy your fucking Fenrirs because everybody and their mom thought that they were going to be banned because they're banned in the OCG. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's Yu-Gi-Oh! like what we saw now last format, which, again, this is where it's such a catch-22 because the format was very diverse after even just this past YCS. Yeah, Unchained started kind of taking hold of the meta, especially near the top 32 and all that. But it's still very diverse. Like, Cash Tira is probably a tier 2 deck. You're going to probably play it as, like, a going second deck now. That's what I'm seeing a lot of people talk about. But, like, if you're playing Unchained, Labyrinth, Salad, Gate Guardian, like, whatever, like, your deck really doesn't have to change at all. And that's okay because it was a diverse format. The problem is the issues that people had, like me, people the issues that people had with now last format are now transferred into this format just you get rid of a rise heart but now you still have to deal with king calamity and eradicator and i understand that the jack atlas structure deck just came out but having king calamity and eradicator be cards that you have to deal with isn't exactly or king calamity and eradicator i think i actually said rise heart but, but having those two cards in the format doesn't mean that it's going to be a healthy format and so only time will tell how the format is going to evolve and what sort of tech cards people are going to start playing. So prepare your anus is the best thing I can tell you. But if you play test and you practice, you know, as long as you don't get blown out out of bad luck, you know, you can see some success. So guys, sorry to be rambling on. I really wanted to dissect this new balance. Let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.